Hi guys, I'm David with MediaUnlock.net, and this is our fourth and final tutorial on how to shoot and edit high dynamic range photos or HDR photos. Like I said at the beginning or the intro video, we'll be using Lightroom as well as two plugins, one, by, one made by Photomatics and one made by Google Nix. So we have our first three pictures, the very first pictures I took. And actually, this is not one we're going to be using, so we'll go on and remove it. So we've got these three pictures here at different exposures. I believe I used two stops in between each one. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight them. Now, one thing that you can do before or after you do your editing is I have some dust on my sensor and it's gonna, and it shows up in these photos and it will show up even more when we do the editing process. So you can go in and fix that before or after you do your um, HDR rendering. So I'm gonna do it afterwards. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to export and we're gonna export into HDR Effect Pro 2 which is made by Google Nix. And it won't take too long. And these are in raw format as I took them. And it's gonna pull it in. There's the three photos. I have the alignment, auto alignment checked. Um, I have the strength at 100. And you can mess around with your color temperature a little bit right here as well. I'm happy, I wanna leave it exactly where it's at as well. I'm doing a chromatic abrasion. Um, it will automatically go through and fix the chromatic abrasion. If you guys don't know what a chromatic abrasion is, let me show you. So here is a photo, an HDR, one of the one of three pictures I took for an HDR photo of this barn. And it has very small amounts of chromatic abrasion in it. So let me just zoom way in because you really can't see it unless you zoom in. And we'll go up to the top because you're going to see it up here the most. So you see these little purples and greens that are on the edges of this barn and it's probably going to be like that around these trees here. So a lot of these edges that stick stick out and it gets better when there's more information like when we get down to the information here you don't see it as much but when it's up against uh, an over contrast or, or the background is, is kind of blown out compared to it you can see the chromatic abrasion here now what causes that is uh, has to do with the lens that you're using one you want to use a higher quality lens like an L lens you're probably not going to see that happen um, so it has to do with the reflective of color that's brought into the sensor when the camera takes the picture. I'm using a cheaper Tamron, I think 19 to 35, the lens I used to shoot the HDR photos that we used in, uh, in part three. Um, it's not the greatest lens in the world. It definitely does the job if you know how to edit, um, but it does cause some chromatic abrasion. So just kind of want to show you guys that. So we're gonna take this off, move this, and we're gonna hit create HDR. And it's going to take a second, and as you guys can see, it's aligning. And it'll take a second more. And the nice thing about the HDR FX Pro 2 is that I find it to be the quickest process in getting the highest, quickest process for highest quality HDR photo. If that makes you guys, if that makes any sense, guys. So here we go. We got these are all presets over here on the left. And we can scroll down and, and look at some different presets. You know, that's kind of a cool one. Look at all that look at all that dust on my sensor right there. I guess I need to get my sensor cleaned. So you you see all that dust and the photo itself doesn't really look I mean that that preset just looks horrible. It just makes the, the photo look crappy, in my opinion. You guys might like something like that. I don't. I want my HDR photos to look maybe a tad bit cartoony, but pretty natural. And I think this is one of the more natural presets. So once you've kind of got the preset you like, you know, then we're gonna do some basic editing on the preset, some quick editing, or you might like it as is, you might like, this is amazing, boom, we're gonna click save, I'm done. Um, you get, see where you get the, some chromatic abrasion, if you look down here in this corner, see that chromatic abrasion on these rocks, you know, it's not able to get all the chromatic abrasion out, but then again, it's not very obvious unless you're gonna blow this up and have this printed in a really big photo, so. Um, and you can see that chromatic abrasion there. So let's, uh, I like to pop my contrast up a little bit. Structure's pretty cool. It's very, very similar to clarity if you use Lightroom a lot. So I don't like to go over like probably 40. If we go really high, you know, that actually doesn't look too bad. 
Um, but again, this is just over sharpened kind of. I don't really like that look. So we'll pop it down to maybe 37. I'm not gonna go over 40. Um, let's see what else we can do here. We can bring the shadows up or down. I'm gonna bring my shadows down. I'm gonna bring my highlights down, especially if you've got a lot of over contrast, you know, you wanna bring that down. Um, we could mess around with color temperature and depth here, saturation, we'll pop the saturation up a tad bit. Um, one thing I really think is awesome about this piece of software, and it's really quick to use, is the control points. So I can set up multiple control points throughout the photo, but I want to do some work to this mountain right here. So I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna make figure out how big I need this control point, and I wanna make it yay big or so, and maybe we'll bring it up a tad bit so it's not gonna be doing too much to the water, and I'm not too worried about the sky there. Um, so what I can go is I can go and add a little bit of structure to this, and as you can see, it's changing a tad bit, but you can't see it too much from the change. So let's do like a exposure so you guys can actually see the difference. And maybe we'll bring the control point down a tad bit more. And you see it's doing some work to that mountain. So I probably want to darken the mountain up a tad bit, add a little extra contrast, um, put a little structure into it. Um, if I wanted to, you could add strength. There's all kinds of different options here. Tent, temperature, whites, black, structure, saturation, contrast, and exposure. And then once I'm done with that, I can make a second control point if I want to do over here. And I could go in and mess with the expo exposure on that, as you guys can see. And we're just gonna not use that and hit Control Z, and that'll take it back to its normal size. So and I'll just hit the control point button and now they're gone. So this is pretty basic, you know, this is not uh, this is a pretty well balanced photo. This is a uh, non super cartoony looking HDR, um, but there's not a lot of different colors and things. There's not a lot of clouds. If there are more clouds, that would add some, uh, some interesting amount. The structure would, would definitely show up more if there are more clouds. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna click save and it's gonna shoot it back into Lightroom for me. And it will take a few seconds and then we will show you the other plugin we'll be editing in today. Um, but before I do that, there's a few things I wanna fix now that I've got the edited version. So we're gonna click, we're already over in develop and we wanna fix some dust issues. So um, let's go through and fix dust issues. And I'm not gonna fix all the dust issues, just the ones that are most prevalent. Like there's some up here in this corner, not worried about that. There's a bunch here, again, it's not very obvious unless you just really blow this up and you're planning to put this in a huge photo. So you've got a little bit of dust. And you're gonna find that a lot of people are gonna have, some more than others are gonna have, everyone's gonna have a little bit of dust. It's just kind of inevitable. You can't get away from it since their dust kind of sucks. And I think there's a big piece down here if I remember correctly. And you really can't see it, but it's right there. So we're gonna go on and fix that. And awesome. So majority of the dust is fixed and we'll exit back out and there you go you have an edited hdr photo that was pretty quick and it would have been a lot quicker if i didn't have to sit there and explain it one other thing i want to do is i really don't like this guy right here so let's go on and get rid of him and we'll bring this closer in so it looks like it fits and there we go so let's move on to the next three photos and we'll highlight these three we'll right click export to Photomatix Pro and you have some more options with this software and if you get to know it really well um, it's definitely not the quickest compared to the Google Nix plugin but it definitely gives you more options so I've already got kind of this preset set up it's got align images crop alignment results um, which pretty much means that in, once it aligns, it may have to crop to make things fit correctly. So you don't want a lot of different, you don't want a lot of movement in between uh, your pictures. Again, that comes back to holding your hand really steady when you're doing handheld shots. Of course, I got handheld, include perspective correction, uh, reduce noise, reduce chromatic abrasions. We talked about that earlier. And this will automatically put it back into Lightroom once it's done editing. And I'm gonna do a TIFF 8-bit. You can do 16-bit if you want, or JPEG, depending on how powerful your computer is. Um, I don't really see a need for 16-bit, but I'll do I'll do the 8-bit. So I'll hit export, and it's going to export into the Photomatix software. And 
popped up over on the other side of the screen. So we'll go ahead and bring it on over here. And we will bring in this. And it's going to align and it's just going through getting it set up, ready to be worked on and edited. And it's gonna go on and do the reduced chromatic abrasions, and I believe that's the last thing it's gonna do, if I remember correctly. Now, if you were doing a JPEG, it would run through this a little bit faster, and if you're doing the 16-bit TIFF, then it would be a little bit slower. So, and, it, and of course, it all depends on how beefy your your editing machine is, what you're editing on. So, and there we go. Okay, so and we've already got some noise or some. Uh, dust right there oops let's not do that don't want to look at that right now and we can go through and pick out see if there is a preset this is your balance one that looks pretty good looks pretty nice and i'd go in and and work on some effects and and try to make it look nicer you have tonal mapping exposure fusion so you have so many more look at all that all these different functions you can go in and work with um and then we can hit the tonal map and we have the contrast optimizer, detailed enhancer, and tone compressor. So you have so many more options to work with than you do with the Google Nix. Uh, as well, you've got your histogram down here to work with, and you can break up your green, blues, and reds to really figure out what you need. Uh, and it's got quite a few cool looking presets. Um, so we can kind of go through some of these presets, see if there's anything that catches my eye. Like I kind of like that shot, but again, if you look at the water, um, it just looks um, too, too fake for me. I'm just not comfortable with that. That looks pretty cool. Looks pretty nice. Very smooth water look. Uh, maybe a little warm. I'd like to cool certain parts of this shot down. Then you've got something like this, which just to me just looks horrible. Um, some people may like that out there though. And you can just kind of do the same thing I did with the Google Nix plugin. If you find one you like, you go with it. And then if you want to work on it, um, more in depth then you can do that as well so that's how that works so let's go on and we'll pick balanced and let's see if there's any maybe add a little more strength into it uh, tonal no I want to make the tones pop a little bit more a little more strength let's see the mid-tones they don't brighten it up too much so we'll bring the mid-tones down a little bit and maybe we'll bring up the black clipping Color temperature, do I want to mess, do I want to throw off? And with HDR, you can really throw your color temperature kind of off and make it look pretty cool. Um, so maybe I want to do, do a kind of color temperature like that. And then do we want to saturate that a little bit? Or do we want to make it jump out a little bit more? So maybe we'll bring this down a tad bit. It's kind of a cool looking photo. Um, I like that all right for just quick editing. So now we hit save and re-import. And it's going to send it back into Lightroom. And it should be about finished up. It's going to take a second. Like I said, when you're working with these bigger uh, files, like the 8-bit TIFF or the 16-bit TIFF, it's going to be a little more taxing on your computer, so or con considerably more taxing. And there you go. There's the there's the shot. And again, we could just go to there and let's just kill all the noise that we see. And there's a little bit here and there. And there you guys have it. That is how you edit a quick edit HDR photo. Like I said, both plugins. You can do more in-depth stuff if you need to. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Of course, there'll be uh, I'll put all the raw files in the extra folder as well as that histogram uh, video. And if you guys have any more questions or need help uh, figuring stuff out, of course, you can email me at mediaunlock101 at gmail.com. And uh, hopefully this helped you guys out. Have a great one, and we'll catch you next time for our next big tutorial.